called ghetto. I can't get no sleep, which make my life more simple. Miles inside these shoes, so I don't stomp by tiptoe. Fell a thousand times, and still I roll no limp though. But I wouldn't trade a thing for what I have. I know I do what I need to make it last. You're slow today. I beat you. That's finally. Awesome. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> Today is day four, the final day of our Avalanche Safety Training Level 2 course out with Soul Rides. It's been a great week of learning so far, and taking this course has really made me realize how unprepared a lot of people are in the backcountry, and it's kind of scary. So I don't want to harp too much, but I highly suggest you take an Avalanche course if you're a backcountry user. It's raining down here in the parking lot this morning, but snowing up top, so let's get up there and see what the day brings. Oh, it's weird having the GoPro back on the helmet today. I've still been talking to myself the last couple days, but with no GoPro on the helmet. Just talking to you guys. We got a new mic set up today. Hopefully it's gonna work well. Up to almost 1,200 meters now, and we're just getting below that freezing level and it's starting to snow. So I think kind of on the agenda today is to find a little bit of an open spot where we can actually find uh, some preserved hoarfrost frost and do a bit of a slope test. And then I think we'll probably do one mock burial avalanche rescue. Uh, we've done quite a few over the last couple days. It'd be good to show you guys how that works. <laughs> That was a good belt blow. I was really worried for a second there. I thought it was my chain. Look at the belt. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh yeah. 759 kilometers for that belt, which uh, it's not very good. Oh yeah. yeah. Kyler has uh, probably 1100 kilometers on his belt, and I'd say he rides harder than me. So kind of weird how that works. Couple columns. Getting learnt. Yeah, not quite Southern Planner. So we all did some compression tests over here. Didn't really get anything for results. And then we didn't expect anything as well, but we did, we tried to test the sled on a slab to see if we could get the sled to trigger something. Again, nothing. So pretty stable snowpack in this zone at this elevation on this aspect. Like it's so variable. Snowpack's so variable though, you can't really say, oh, it's safe because you dug up hit in one spot. But the next thing we're gonna do is ride around here for a bit because the snow is great and it's snowing pretty hard here. But then 
Jeremy and Kyler are getting a mock avalanche scenario set up and uh, we'll head over there shortly and see how that goes. I can't see anything. I thought he was coming right for me. Yeah, I think it'll be a fairly a fairly simple scenario, but he might he might get one deep somehow. He might have one up in a in a tree again. Now I know better. We're rolling into our mock avalanche scenario here. This is a spot where actual avalanches do happen. I believe somebody has actually died in this exact location. My red light blinking. Uh, it's going up. So the final rescue scenario of your motorized avalanche skills level two. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Ready. Are you guys confident? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so here's your scenario. You had four of your Jerry's. Though you know those old guys you guys call Jerry's all the time that are part of your groups? Don't want to listen to you young guys. They think they fucking know everything, all that sort of stuff, right? Well, they were riding ahead of you doing what they wanted all day, and you were kind of worried about the avalanche conditions. You just heard a big whoomph. You've come over this ridge here, and as you pop over the ridge, you look at that big head wall right there, and you see a big crown. Now that crown's come down, and just for make-believe, there's a bunch of pink ribbons outlining what all is debris in there. Yeah. Just since we're playing make-believe, yeah, as you assess it, there's no leftover hang fire. It's really safe to go. But you, you're pretty sure the Jerry's just got caught in an avalanche. You don't know how many of the Jerry's because they're never watching for one another, right? So you're not sure how many, but you remember you got that key Jerry, that real mouthpiece Jerry's ahead. He always thinks about, he knows everything. He's always cutting lines over the other guy's head, really dumb moves. He's in there too. So you're pretty sure he probably just cut a line over all four of them, you know, and maybe buried all four of them. So it's up to you from there. I'm going to be timing. Let's go closer to the free field, have a look, see what's going on, and then we'll assess. All right. Looks like it kind of ran down into here, and it's quite far up there, baby. Okay, so what I'll do is me, Matt, Cody, one guy up on the top. I see, I see someone and someone check that out on their way up there. I'm gonna go up to the top left. We already got one guy recovered. Got him out, I'll turn him on search in a second. 
Does he know how many guys are buried? Three more guys. We're both flipping the search right now. Cody, we need one guy to go up where Hank is at. There's no search boat up over there right now. Okay, I'll go towards Hanky. I got it. Got signal 61. I got two, I got two signals here. I'm here, mark the signal and then find the second. I got a hit here. He hears someone under the snow. Go get him. I'm good. I got one. Seven and a half, but I had three point three right there. Three five, three eight, six six. We got a probe with the slope, right? Where's the small summer? Yeah, it doesn't, uh, 4-2 four, four now. Can this is the it? smallest. I see 3-5-3-3. Three, three, three. Hey. Shut up. Look up that. <laughs> I even looked in that one. <laughs> How do you get up there? Ah, we said that too. Uh, I checked this tree. Uh, I looked up in this one and I didn't see nothing. What was the what was the time? Uh, you, you were dealing with this problem at seven minutes. Yeah, seven minutes. Those damn Jerry's getting themselves caught with no training. Overall, I feel like we did pretty well. Still a couple things I can fine tune, like communication. And even maybe yet still some, uh, you know, beacon searching skills, because I was headed the wrong way for a second there. I did realize it, but, you know, I probably wasted 10 seconds trying to get a good read on that one signal. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Perfect! So, one of the great things about having Jeremy as a teacher for this course here is he, he's a sledder just like us. He's relatable. He likes to do these cool exploring missions just like us. And, he, you know, he was probably, him and his friends were the first ones into probably a lot of these zones around here. But he actually has av actual avalanche experience too. He's been caught in one and almost died and he's had to big friends out of them, which is probably part of the reason he do does this, teaches these courses. <clears throat> but it's not just some dry course reading out of a textbook at all. 
Like we've been ripping our sleds the last few days, cruising around, uh, talking about a lot of different stuff from snowpack to terrain, uh, avalanche rescue, uh, and uh, yeah, it's been a great course. I was also trying to think about why more people don't take AVI courses. And I was one of those people for a long time. And basically, it comes down to two things. Time, because everybody wants to be riding the days they have, because, you know, every, most people have a pretty limited season. But as you can see, we're still out here riding our sleds every day, having a good time, smashing the pal. Um, obviously, lots of teaching involved, but it's not like you're sitting in a classroom. And the second reason being money. Lots of people don't want to spend the money. Uh, honestly, I think it's undervalued. I think it's pretty cheap because it's four days long. You're on the snow every day and you're learning a lot. Whereas you can take a two day course, not course, you can take a two day clinic with a pro rider. That's probably going to cost you, I don't know, 1200 or even more Canadian for two days. So, part of being a good rider isn't just being able to ride. Over the last few days, we've done quite a few rescue scenarios. You know, that's great, but the really main thing is to learn how to not put yourself or any of your group in risk in the first place. Because if you have three people or more buried in an avalanche, there's a good chance at least one person's not gonna make it. By not having any avalanche training, you don't really know what putting yourself at risk even means. And even just taking an AST-1, I wouldn't even say uh, gets you that much farther ahead. You know, one field day for six hours, you're not gonna learn that much. Just get some training. And thanks for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow.